Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. In this video we are going to learn about enzymes and how they work and what the factors are that affect enzyme action. So this is a typical definition. Enzymes are biological catalysts that speed up chemical reactions. So what do we mean by this? Well in our cells thousands of chemical reactions take place and we need those reactions to happen quickly enough to keep us alive and it is enzymes that speed up these reactions and they are called catalysts. A catalyst is just something that speeds up a chemical reaction without being used up itself. There are three main types of enzyme. There are the type that build large molecules from smaller ones. There's the type that break down larger molecules into smaller ones and there's the type that change one molecule into another molecule. We don't need to worry about the third one for now, so we'll concentrate on the first two in this video. So here are some illustrations of the first two types. At the top, our enzyme is breaking down a larger molecule into a smaller molecule. So enzymes work on substances called substrates, and the reaction takes place on what is called the active site of the enzyme. So this here would be the active site for the enzyme. That's the active site. So this diagram at the top shows the substrate joining with the enzyme. It fits into the shape of the active site. And then you have what's called the enzyme substrate complex. And the enzyme goes to work on the substrate and does whatever it's supposed to do. In this case, it's supposed to break down the substrate molecule into smaller molecules. So here we have the enzyme after the products have been released from the active site. The enzyme is still intact and can be used again with another substrate and here the products are smaller molecules than the substrate was. At the bottom here is an example or an illustration of an enzyme that takes the substrate molecules and builds them up into a larger molecule. So the product is a larger molecule than the substrate. So once again we have our active site and the substrate molecules will fit neatly into the active site. Then we have an enzyme substrate complex where they, they are together and the enzyme is doing its work on the substrate. And then the product will be released from the active site. The enzyme is free to work on another substrate and the product was released and now it's a larger molecule than it was before. And this is called the lock and key theory, or the lock and key mechanism. Now enzymes have five important properties. Number one, they are proteins. So the enzyme is made of protein molecules. Number two, each enzyme only works on one type of substrate. And that's because the active site has a very specific shape. The shape of the active site is specific to a particular substrate and only that substrate will fit. Number three, they're not used up in the reaction. Number four and five, they are affected by temperature and pH. Now we're gonna focus on these two for the rest of the video, and we're going to have a look at some graphs. So here is a graph for enzymes that work in our body. It's a graph that shows the relationship between temperature and rate of reaction. And there are three sections here to consider. The first section shows increasing temperature leads to increasing rate. And this is because the particles involved have increasing energy, so there are more collisions, so the rate increases. So as we can see, as the temperature is increasing here, the rate of reaction is increasing. The next section shows the optimum temperature for the enzymes. And you'll notice it's around body temperature. And you know that the human body is around 37 degrees C. The last section shows that at higher temperatures, the rate decreases rapidly. And this happens because the high temperature causes the enzyme's active site to be denatured, which means its shape is broken down and the substrate no longer fits. So here's an example. If we look at this enzyme's active site, we see that high temperatures will damage the shape of the active site. 
and therefore the substrate molecule will not be able to fit neatly into this active site anymore. And this is why if your temperature goes above 41 degrees, you're at risk of dying because all the thousands of reactions in your cells are slowing down. So this part of the graph shows that the enzymes have been denatured. Enzymes are affected in a similar way by a pH that is too high or too low. They can become denatured. Here are graphs for two enzymes. There's pepsin and pancreatic amylase. So pepsin, which is found in the stomach, operates at its best in acidic pHs. Around pH 2 is best. So that is the optimum pH for pepsin. And the environment in which pancreatic amylase operates is slightly alkaline, around pH 8. So that's where it works best. That's its optimum pH. And each type of enzyme will have its own optimum pH based on where it needs to work. Okay, so that was just a quick video on enzymes and the factors that affect enzyme action. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and make sure you share the video with your friends. See you next time.